Have you ever seen those cool moving metal art sculptures and wondered how the heck did they make it do that? Well, today we're talking to legendary kinetic sculptor Ivan Eiler, and he gives us a peek behind the scenes to explore how he creates these magnificent moving metal masterpieces. This is Weld All Around. Once inside his shop, Ivan showed me this really cool mechanical dude that he was working on. It might look familiar to you. I don't know if you can see the resemblance with somebody here. It might be me or it might be Ivan, but how was the process of making just the face here? So I sculpted the face in clay, and then I took that clay sculpture and pushed that clay down into sand. So it's just sand casting. And then what I did to get all these different things that you see going on here, is just layers. So I melted down a certain amount of aluminum and poured it in, and then cold poured on top of that, and that's what gives you those weird sections in between, all these lines and stuff that you see. I mean, one, to give it character. Two, I didn't have a crucible big enough to pour it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I know when you're like melting down metal and stuff, it's easy to get impurities and stuff in there, oh, sure, and they float yeah. up to the top. Yeah. Like, how much material are you losing to impurities like when you're casting? Oh, not much with aluminum. Aluminum's really good for that. Like you don't even have to put flux in it or anything. It's not like casting bronze. When you're doing aluminum, you're scraping the impurities off the top. They flow right to the surface of the crucible. So once you got it nice and liquid, you just take in the spoon and just scrape in the surface. Yeah, aluminum's very forgiving when it comes to casting. Is that aluminum? No, that's steel. That's what it's called metal chasing. So I do that just with hammers and chisels. Really? You got all this fine detail in there with just chisels? Yep, and a hammer, yeah. Exactly, yeah. That is crazy, man. With him, the whole purpose of him is he's mechanical, so it's a kinetic sculpture. These discs are gonna be cams, and then it runs off a motor. The cams spin around once every minute. So when these rotate around once every minute, the followers on the cams are moving cables that control everything. Are these bike brake lines? Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's all they are. they will have one, you know, that'll move them from side to side when that cam moves. And then you'll have one that'll move his arm, his other arm will come up and hold his welding hood and he'll lift it up out of the way and then bring it back down. Every minute he'll run through a series. So he'll be standing there over the table, have his hand on his hood, his light will flash like he's welding, he'll have his hood down and he'll run a bead and then he'll lift up his helmet, look at it, lift his gun up, and then come back over here, put his hood back down, put his torch back down and he'll run that series over and over. And I'm building him for uh, quantum machinery. So they're the ones that gave me the uh, the Sigmund table. This is one of the products that they have, but they have all kinds of stuff. This is going to be a piece that they'll take to trade shows to set up by the table and he'll just sit there and continually look like he's welding over and over. It'll be really cool because people go into any trade show anywhere, they'll see that and it'll get people to walk over and be like, what am I looking at? This is this weird mechanical man just running beads over and over. But your background in motorcycles, that definitely has given you a totally different view on sculptures, I feel like. Well, it's timing. I mean, when it comes to mechanical timing, the cams, it's the way to go. I remember one time I was watching a thing on World War I and they were talking about trying to put machine guns on planes so they could shoot through the propeller so the person in the cockpit could actually see where they were hitting their target. And immediately I was like, well, just a cam. And then they went on to say, oh, and I couldn't figure it out. And they had like their top guys on it. And it was like, you built an engine. You have cams to time out everything in your engine. It's, it's a cam. And they were like, and then they finally figured it out. It was a cam. <laughs> it's like, of course it was. That's, that's how you do any kind of mechanical timing. It's the same thing. This is just a mechanical timing that has an entire series that takes a minute to run through. Instead of just being a, an on and off, each one of those discs is creating a different movement at a specific time. It's the same thing as the cams in your engine. It's mechanical timing. How do you get the timing down? Like, what kind of math or measuring do you oh, use? No. No, 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 no measure. No. No math and measuring, no, no. I'll build the followers, I'll connect the cables to the followers, and then what I'll do is I'll move the cams, I'll turn the motor on, let it move to a certain position. Here's my starting point, just mark it with a Sharpie. Now when I'm in this position, I want him to be here. So this cable has to be here. This cable has to be here. This mechanical component has to be in this position. And then I will just move that follower alongside that cam until it's in that position, make a mark. Do that all the way around and then connect the dots. I think a lot of people out there like oh, sure. are intimidated by that kind of thing because like a lot of math. Man, math is not my strong suit. Like when I was in high school, I barely graduated pre-algebra. You know, like <laughs> not my strong suit. But again, it's the same thing with measurements and stuff. It's arbitrary. Mathematically, you could figure all that out using math if that's how your brain works. 
Mine just doesn't work that way. Mine doesn't either. So <laughs> yeah. like that's why I'm like, but you don't happy need to it hear to. There's a, more than one way to skin a cat, or more than one way to build a mechanical welder. <laughs> Figure out a way to do it that makes sense to you. I mean, even when it comes to measurements, we go, okay, like from this post to this post is, you know, how many feet? Okay, that's six feet. Well, let's say I don't need to know that. I just need to know that I'm cutting a piece of wood that fits between these two posts. I don't need a measurement. I could literally, I could stick my hands out. I could get a piece of rope. I could take a giant pair of spreaders. Whatever it is, I just have to make it that size. The number doesn't matter as long as it's the length I need it. So it's like, yeah. we need something to fit in this place. Exactly, you know? yeah. It's like, could do the same type of measuring on that. It's like, okay, it needs to fit right there. Let me just mark here and go yeah. cut, you know. Exactly. I feel like people overcomplicate the trade. The yeah. complications are no more complicated than anything else. I mean, you know, I, I'm not a good accountant, but if I wanted to be, I could go to school and study it and figure it out. It's the same thing. If you want to be a welder, be a welder. You don't have to be scared of it. You can learn anything. Anybody can do anything they want to do. And there's plenty of places out there to teach you how to do that stuff. And nowadays, you don't even actually have to go to school for it. Let's say you just want to, like, make some lawn art or something. You just want to weld some stuff together in your spare time or maybe work on the body of your old truck or something. Get your hands on a welder, borrow one from a buddy or buy yourself one that's affordable. I mean, literally at that point, you can just play around with it and figure it out. Get your hands on something, start doing it.